very sustaining their children and they were often limited to strengthening in the global south. We are of the view Sorry, you which can be which can be transferred to the SADC region and Africa as a whole as per the tenets of our foreign policy. If you don't hear me on my on my on my on my remarks, uh, opening remarks, I will email them to you, Honorable um, Chetty. Can you hear me now? But how are you going to hear me when you are focusing elsewhere? Because you are not even here in the meeting. You are there in your kitchen, probably, if you are at your house. Honorable members, given the tensions in trade relations We therefore applaud the move by South Africa to expand its strategic economic and find new markets. Genetics of global economy. What's your problem? What's your mic problem? is cutting. Your mic is cutting. That you can hardly hear, Chairperson. Then, if the mic is cutting, it's fine. Don't menace a Chairperson because you are disturbing me. I will send the remarks to you. If my mic is cutting, it's because of your network, not because of me. Don't ask Chepes, call Chepes. My network is full today. Then and the problems of the network there where you are case that we allow the department to speak. Please, when I'm responding to you, you hear me properly, but when I'm doing my opening remark, you don't hear me properly. Are you sabotaging me now? I I will remove you in my me. I will judge me. Hey, mm-hmm. honorable members, the genetics of, of, of global and South Africa needs to open up access to market opportunities, not only remain in the West. We are mindful that relations with the U.S. and the EU remain strong. But in my view, we open up different honorable members. I did. I wish I was understanding and, and often, often neglect as a portfolio committee. What we would like to see uh, um, is that when a South African delegation, either politically or trade related, goes to China or India, such as Vietnam, Indonesia, or Singapore. We also have the, have to navigate a complex um, international relations um, landscape and find themselves balancing their relationship in the element of strategic order. We do recognize the related advantages 
which include the elimination of tariffs between member states. We have reduced the prices due to competition within the market and possible investment opportunities in the market. By Entering into such a a portfolio of economic opportunities and actors and have more diversity for our exports. Of course, on our we have a potential risk of an influx of flat local markets and they would need to do due The of trade within ASEAN member states is still that South Africa has a commodity. The ASEAN needs, and, and if that offers us a beneficial manufacturing, by all means, promote a trade relations and economic a, operations within the ASEAN as it's before 1994. Now, honorable members, on that note, I'm welcoming all of you uh, into our meeting. Uh, Deputy Minister Bottas, can you enter and mute your mic? Because we hear noises behind. Or oh, I'm going to mute you. Or hmm? Please. So, uh, on that note, you are welcome, all of uh, Uh, those who are in Cape Town, yeah, we are here to serve our people. So, honourable members, uh, without um, we don't allow the department to brief us. Um, uh, DG, where are you? DG, I'm here, honourable chair. I'm here. So you are going to do. You are both a uh, presentations. Um, card is here. On the treaty, and then um, and then uh, the other uh, presentation would follow. Then you do them. So that we are able to engage. Are we clear? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I didn't hear well, but I believe you have given me the floor. Did you? Did you give me the floor, Honorable Chair? Thank you. I'm okay. And I have given okay. you the floor. The floor is both. the floor is yours on both. Chairperson. Chair. Hey, Yeah. Do you have I, a problem I, with? I, I think I think the system is going to network. Is going to disturb you in this meeting. Did because, you? It's Nola. But you are breaking Nola. The problems are not mine. They are yours. Because where you are, there's no name. You allow the DG to speak. DG, over to you. Present. No, Thank you. No, sir. 
Sir, even the DJ is struggling to hear you. We are all struggling to hear you. <laughs> we can hear each other except you. So I think the problem is with you and you're going to face difficulties in everything. DJ. DJ. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Honorable Chair. Yes. Uh, before I do so, may I indicate that uh, yeah. uh, my, my colleagues are with us and today I'm requesting permission to allow the colleague from the desk, uh, Ms. Cindy Mkuku, um, to, to take the committee through the matter of the of this accession to the Treaty of Amity. And then, uh, and then I'll have to recognize my team who is there, and then uh, they thank the, the honourable committee for having afforded us this opportunity to come and brief the committee on this matter. If I am heard, I just want to confirm if I'm given permission to hand over, over after a few remarks to Miss Mkuku, who is going to to take the honorable committee through the 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 whole presentation but i just wanted to give a, 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 a an introductory wow. remarks which uh, she will put up there can you hear me honorable members honorable honor can you mute your, your mic please please mute your mic Continue. As I continue, thank you. Um, honorable DG. members, yes. I, I'm, I'm going on. I hope. I'm, yeah. Thank Sorry. you, Honorable Chair. We, we, we are bringing here this matter. Um, Honorable members, I just felt I needed to, uh, through a pictorial presentation of the territorial area where these ASEAN countries are, just to give the committee the benefit of what, uh, the, of what we are talking about. And in green there, it shows the members of the ASEAN, and the brown there shows the countries which have free trade arrangements and agreement with ASEAN. Next slide. Uh, um, next slide, please. So we just mapped out there to indicate so that as honorable members are taking this presentation on why and how they will have this, appreciate the what we are talking about here. And we just depicted there the GDP of each of the member state of the ASEAN and then um, and we also showed the GDP per capita and all honorable members will see that um, the, 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 the highest there with a 1.0 trillion dollars is Indonesia and then you have the Thailand with 505 billion US dollars as it is indicated there from the World Bank source of 2018. So all these member states that are indicated that honorable members can see what, why, how, what we are talking about. The population also here, the highest being Indonesia there, and then uh, the others are, are average, uh, as well as those that have very um, uh, uh, small populations. The GDP per capita, Singapore is the highest, followed by Brunei. Next slide, please. This will give the Honorable Committee an idea why it is in South Africa's national interest to then have a, a enter into this treaty, because when we look at our export profile, in the five-year intervals from 20, 2004 to 2019, we can see that there has been a trend of increasing. For example, in 2004, the total trade value was 8 point, only 8.1 billion. And in 2019, it was at 38.6 billion, 
which indicates an average annual growth rate of 13 percent. This should in, uh, indicate the why it is so important for us to really um, get into here. So the exports to Asian, uh, the ASEAN, uh, made up 2.8 percent of South Africa's global export in 2004, and and, and they, they went slightly lower um, in 2019. So imports also follow a similar growth trend, except that South Africa buys more from the ASEAN than we sell to the region, resulting in a significant trade deficit for our country. So it is expected that acceding to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, Treaty of Amity and Cooperation will really improve and will help us to, to open more in order to balance this trade. Next slide, the last one, I believe. And then, our strategy of engagement, honorable members, uh, is that uh, uh, we focus on, on, on particularly Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and v Vietnam, informed, of course, by the value and volume of trade and investment opportunities that can really be of value to us. Through this approach, we seek to obtain collaborative engagements in, in the following sectors, automobiles and automobile parts, mineral beneficiation, agro-processing, aquaculture, energy, ICT, and textiles, among a few of others. So another crucial matter is to begin to satisfactorily address market access issues affecting fresh produce and meat. So in, in a nutshell, honorable members, um, a closer association through accession to this uh, treaty uh, uh, of amity and cooperation will really help us to unblock, it, I mean, will help us to address key issues that I've alluded to earlier. So without any waste of time, I would like to hand over to Ms. Mkuku, who will then take the honorable members through the presentation that was submitted to the Honorable Committee. I just felt it may be important for us to build a, a picture which will enable us to then understand why we should go uh, full steam and request this Honorable uh, uh, Committee uh, for, on behalf of Parliament to, to really um, uh, 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 ratify this treaty so that the necessary processes will kick in. Without any waste of time uh, and with your indulgence, I would like to invite Ms. Puku to take the Honorable Committee through. I submit. Cindy. Okay, this is Ms. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, DG, and good evening. Uh, my name is. Can you see your face? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Why are you having such a beautiful day? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, okay. uh, thank you very much to DG. Uh, DG has given the summary of the work that we are doing. What we are presenting here today is the. Uh, I'm trying to push the slides. All right. Uh, is to inform the Portfolio Committee on International mm -hmm. Relations uh, that South Africa's accession to the Treaty of Amity and uh, Cooperation of ASEAN has been uh, granted and has been approved by all the foreign ministers of the, of the association. And also to request that Parliament approves South Africa's accession to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. And uh, our reason for this is that the, cooperate, the collaboration with the region will enhance our own economic growth because we looked at the region as a region that is growing at 5.9% on average. And it is also to the South Africa's national interest that we utilize the skills development opportunities that are in the region and that is part of our foreign policy of promoting the south-south cooperation 
And uh, we looked at the region also, uh, uh, according to what DG has summarized, that it is a region made up of 10 countries with a GDP that is above uh, 1 trillion, uh, sorry, GDP above 3 trillion, uh, with a consumer market. Those are the people who are able to buy products from South Africa that is above one, one trillion. And the growth rate is averaging 5.9, as I've said. And also, they are attracting foreign direct investment to the total value of 121 billion US dollars. So when we give these numbers to the portfolio committee, we're trying to give uh, reasons why it is important when we look at this region that we grow. Though we were struggling to hear you, Chair, but I got this part that you, in your opening remarks, where you stated that we need to diversify our trade and investment portfolio. And that is part of doing that. And accession to the TAC allows us more engagement meaningfully with the region instead of uh, once we're engaging bilaterally, we also engage with the region as a, as a, as a, as a group or as a block. And we're also uh, trying to, to, to state that uh, the economic power is shifting towards the Asian region. And therefore, we want to be part of this uh, opportunity that we can be able to access the opportunities that are outlined. Oh, okay. All right. May I continue, Chair? Sure. All right. Thank you. We also stated DG has given the trade overall and, and also has stated that the challenge that we are faced with now is that we are buying more from the ASEAN region, more than we are selling to the ASEAN region. Remember, we have stated that we have a consumer market of above 1 trillion US dollars. So that's a big market. It's a market that we cannot miss. And also to contextualize or bring in closer similarities, uh, ASEAN region, when we look at it, has the total population, that is number of people who can buy products from South Africa, that is above uh, 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 um, 600 million. That is the same total population of SADC, COMESA, and the East African communities. That is what we call as the trilateral free trade area that we have. So it's a big market, but it is made up of those countries and the, the, the GDPs have been outlined by the, by the DG. When we accede to this uh, treaty, we become a high contracting party. All members of ASEAN and all their dialogue partners are high contracting parties upon accession or upon signing the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. And I would like us to, 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 to make reference to the treaty we have shared with the Portfolio Committee, the treaty itself, but I would like to bring the attention of this meeting to the very preamble of the TAC, which states that the, that the main purpose of, the, of, of accession is to agree that you also are part of enhancing peace, friendship, and mutual cooperation with the rest of the members of, of, of ASEAN and also to understand that these friendly relations, what we call amity, uh, have been sown uh, during uh, uh, the um, Asia-Africa summit, the inaugural in 1955 in Bandung. So we have friendly relations generally, but we want to make sure that we're getting closer to the bloc as a whole, and also to make sure that those friendly relations translate into economic gains uh, for mutual uh, benefit of, of South Africa and the rest of the region. And also the areas that this TAC focuses on is cooperation. It is also 
getting access to shared knowledge amongst the dialogue partners because South Africa will be a dialogue partner after it has acceded to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, but that is dependent on the assessment of the ASEAN uh, 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 member states. And also to point out that the, uh, uh, the agreement is, uh, is by consensus. So all members of ASEAN have to agree that when after South Africa had acceded to the TAC, South Africa has contributed in this uh, manner, then we think it is fit then for South Africa to accede uh, to be a, a sorry to 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 get to be a dialogue partner. After we get to the stage of being a dialogue partner, we go to the next level of being a, a, a strategic partner. And these strategic partnerships take a long time. The assessment takes a, a long time. For example, uh, the United States of America. Uh, acceded to the TAC in 1977, but it was only granted the status of being a strategic partner in 2015. Therefore, we, as we get into, into this partnership with ASEAN as a bloc, we are the first, number one, we are the first African country to accede to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation. And therefore, our participation, our engagement, it is an assessment of the rest of the continent. So we are looked upon as that South Africa that carries the weight of the rest of the continent. So the way we engage with uh, ASEAN will determine how fast we get to be promoted to the status of being a strategic partner. And also just to mention in 2002, um, after the uh, establishment or the changing of the OAU to the African Union to the African Union as we know it today. In November of that year, President Mbeck, in his capacity as the chairperson of the AU then, was invited to 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 as a guest speaker in one of the ASEAN summits. And amongst the things that President Mbeki said was that if we could get a closer collaboration with ASEAN, it will be an achievement for the African continent because he was talking on behalf of the African continent. But as South Africa, we are acceding as the country South Africa. But we understand that as South Africa, we carry the weight of the rest of the continent because when we talk about trade, when we talk about investment with the rest of the world, we understand that we are not the biggest market because we are shy of 60 million in terms of consumers that can, can buy products from other parties. But when we present ourselves as part of the trilateral free trade agreement, we're bringing up numbers now of above 600 million. And also when we bring uh, the whole continent through the, 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 the CFTA, that is the continental free trade area, we are selling uh, our position, our, vo our value proposition becomes uh, 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 meaningful because we are bringing a partnership of above 1 billion population. So it is for that reason that we are requesting a favorable consideration by the Portfolio Committee that we do accede to the TAC because it gives us more benefits. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Chair, would like to revert back to the Honorable Chair. We thank you. So I have to Honorable Chair. Are you done with all your presentations? That was the only presentation we are done, Honorable Chair. It is for the Honorable Committee to, to then uh, take okay. it forward. Thank you. Okay. Um, Honorable members, um, um, there you have it. Um, the, the presentation um, um, 
earlier on, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you were briefed that it is tabled as uh, um, um, Section PT1, uh, Subsection 2 of the Constitution uh, of 1996. Uh, that one is very clear. So I'm going to allow you, honorable members, to interact with the presentation um, as presented by Ms. Kuku and uh, the briefing by the DG, the short briefing by the DG uh, earlier on. So um, the floor is yours. Um, if we can finish any here, we are going to be saving uh, more than two hours um, for us. Um, and, and use it um, in our future interactions with the department. So, um, honorable members, questions of clarity, uh, comments. Um, you've got challenges of raising your hands, but I saw uh, earlier on uh, that honorable Shui was able, oh, you are empowered to be. I see hands here. Uh, can I can I have hands? Raise your hands. I see two hands on the system. Who else wants to speak? Begging course. Mola as well. Begging course. Mpanz. Mpanz. Mesh as well. I when I when I when I'm with them, when I you are key, you are not technological challenged. I can see your hand there, unlike these young ones who are technologically challenged here. Yeah. I can see your hand. Thank you. Um, um we've got uh honorable Musue, you are number one, uh, number two, honorable Mola. Um, number three, uh, number one, honorable Mola, number two, um, honorable, who kind is this? Honorable, can you clear the screen? You people, please clear the screen. I can't see my members here now. Whoever shared the screen, I must clear the screen. Why do you have what we have on the screen? Honorable Paul, to mute your mic, please. Um. Who, who has logged in with the phone? Now, can you clear the screen? What are you doing here? Jefferson? Can you clear the screen? Who said the screen here? Thank you. Uh, it's on the side of the department. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, because I want to see. Uh, well, uh, I see hands here. Yeah. I see. Oh, but it's not you are too young. I'm sorry, it's technological. You are too young. Too young. Don't even start that. It's an embarrassment. Eh? No. Okay. I see these hands here. Yeah. Okay. Before technology, your, your hand is up. Boy. What is this? Why is your hand? <laughs> you know, darling, I'm changed. 
Inu zami. No, I see. Inu zami, I'm saying. I see. I see the hand there of Honorable Monsieur is up. I am saying. I am saying. I am saying. I am saying. The hands which are up are those hands. Now you can't say, "Say, say, my hand is up," and I don't see the hands. Check the meeting chat, chair. I will, I will. I'm saying you are calling to me. Oh, my, 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 in that order, Honorable Mishwe, the floor is yours. Leave these young ones who can't raise their hands on the table. The floor is yours, Honorable Mishwe. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. With your indulgence, I also want to ask two questions based on the Bandung conference. But the first conference question has to do with what the DG said about the strategy. He said South Africa focuses particularly on Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and Vietnam. I want to know why China is left out because it is part of the treaty, um, or whether it's because of the bilateral relations, or what is the reason. And secondly, under the, the agreements under the Bandung Conference, point six, they say the groups, one of the principles is non-intervention or non-interference into the <laughs> internal affairs of another country. Uh, I, all right, my question regarding that is how do they uh, implement accountability? Is there any form of accountability between the members? And if they talk about non-interventions, and there are maybe alleged abuses of human rights. Uh, is there anything that's done about that or not? And under point uh, principle seven, um, they talk of uh, non-use of pressures. So the two questions are linked to accountability. If one is doing what other members do not approve of, what measures are taken and what measures are acceptable? to correct the situation. Thank you. Hola. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let us uh, welcome the report on the treaty on amity presented by the department. Uh, in the treaty, uh, it is written that the features of our own amenity include, but not limited to, economic growth, agriculture, expansion of trade, uh, economic infrastructure, and te technical cooperation. I, I would like to check first, Chair, what do we mean when we say technical cooperation? Asking Chair because we must understand everything that is in the treaty, so that our own decision must be informed by the language employed in that particular treaty. Uh, chair, part of what our the Department of Justice does is, is, is entering into some treaties, but that are on the uh, legal, um, legal sector. Uh, in particular, issues relating to extradition treaties and other things. I want, I'd want to check, Chair, if uh, when we speak of justice and, uh, and uh, there is something uh, about justice cooperation in the in, 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 in the treaty, I would like to check if we include uh, something of uh, of an extradition treaty with these countries, and uh, have we been cooperating with the Department of Justice in, in ensuring that we have got a coherent approach in terms of these international relations uh, issues. Uh, the third one, Chair, is on the issue of uh, endorsed by the Cabinet. 
uh, then taken to parliament. I want to check say that um, where there is a request uh, by the executive for an, a, to accede a certain treaty by the legislature in the form of parliament, what happens in an event, what becomes the legal state status of that particular treaty if the treaty is endorsed by cabinet but rejected by, by parliament? What then becomes the, the, the legal status of, of that particular treaty? Chair, in, in the presentation, they, they brought a serious and interesting economic uh, uh, submissions and uh, a very significant economic analysis of the countries that constitute the Southeast Asia region. But part of what we did not uh, get from what has been presented is what is the state of human rights in those countries? Well, Chair, I'm asking this question because in their nature, human rights are international. And therefore, we've entered treaties as the country that speaks particularly on issues relating to human rights. Therefore, we can't be part of any, be a friend of any country that which violates human rights. Maybe even get an analysis of what is the state of human rights in, this, in these countries. And lastly, Chair, the issue of, of the... Uh, a comment or that was made uh, uh, on the issue of uh, the tilting of the economic power uh, from the right to the left, uh, or what they call towards the Asian region. Uh, I'm sure some of us uh, may not be happy uh, with the, that kind of a tilting, but nevertheless, uh, we can discuss it some other time. In particular, Honorable Bechman can be heard with the tilting from the far right to the, to the progressive left. But then we are happy uh, with that tilting and we support it. Thank you very much, Chair. Mm. Thank you, Chair. Can I uh, proceed, Chair? Hello, Chair. It's like we have lost... Okay, no, thank you, you Chair. No, you haven't lost me. Thank you, Chair yeah. Person. Thank you. Chair Person. I just want uh, to start by a question of uh, clarity before I make a comment. I just want uh, the department to tell us in this committee what are the security and financial implications going forward if we support this report. Uh, because uh, we don't want uh, we know that for now we might not have any financial implications, but as time goes on, we might have those financial implications and they will be coming back and say to us, this was not budgeted for. Chairperson, I just want to, in my comment, to, to say, are these relations with the Asian uh, group, does it mean BRICS is dead now. Mm. I agree with the chairperson that South Africa needs to broadband and find new markets within the historically very friendly countries in the Asian grouping. However, in some people's mind, there might be a question, does it mean BRICS is dying? Honorable mm -hmm. Chair, my answer to the question is a categorically no. As the committee, we want to believe that this is about how South Africa is strategically aligning geopol geopolitically forums as a matter of national interest. Our approach is that South Africa cannot afford to play in one multilateral forum within the Global South. And as a committee, we advocate that South Africa should remain in BRICS for a long haul, 
And in my view, Chairperson, South Africa only has to re-envision foreign policy and address the challenges to BRICS cohesion. We, however, know that these are brought about by the domestic politics within the BRICS countries. And the fact that some of our partners are moving towards the right. We support the government's uh, commitment to BRICS as demonstrated through operationalization of the Midrand based Africa Regional Center of the BRICS New Development Bank. We also support the bank's potential to expand its mandate to not only financing South African projects, but also regional yeah. infrastructure and development projects inside the region and beyond. I thank you, uh, Chairperson, for the opportunity to present uh, my argument uh, in this uh, uh, meeting. And uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Honorable Moela, Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Sanbunani, Honorable Members, Yabingelela. Honorable Chair, um, and greetings to the department, Deputy Ministers, thank you, and uh, DG and the entire team. Honorable Chair, um, let me start by saying, um, 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 as the committee, I think in your closing remarks, uh, I know probably you'll do that in your closing remarks. After, I, after we've closed, I know we won't have an opportunity to also send our condolences, message of condolences uh, 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 to one of our own, a member of parliament, Oma um, Mutiti Jamini, who happened to pass on in the early hours today. So I know that we'll do that in the closing remarks, but I just felt that I must do it also before you close the meeting, because I know you'll do it as you close the meeting that as a committee, we send our message of condolences to the family and the, to the entire family of the ANC and the parliament in general. Uh, Chair, I've got two issues that I think I want to raise. Uh, we are, the, the department is speaking about facilitation of South African national economic interest. Uh, I just want to check with the leadership of the department as to uh, what are these interests that they are talking about and how will it impact on us as a country, uh, uh, the, the, the economic interest. That's the first matter. And the other matter that I think is important because most of the issues have been covered by the last two speakers, Honorable Nola and Honorable Mbanza. Uh, the other one, the other matter that I think I wanted to raise is in terms of the skills development. They're speaking about skills development through training opportunities and so on. What are these critical skills? If can be uh, 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 be given an opportunity, or if the department can clarify, what are these critical skills, the economic critical skills that are there, that they are talking about, so that we can also have a a, a clue. That's my, my my those were my question, honourable chair, and I submit. Thank you very much. Thank you, honourable Muela, uh, honourable Gosi. Can you please unmute your mic with just me anyway? Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. My, under, my understanding is that accession to the treaty uh, also implies that there is a graduated process that we follow. We do not automatically become uh, members that benefit from the relationships that govern this uh, association. So it, as, 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 it, as it stands, as it stands, it will take us more than 20 years to actually be direct beneficiaries of the arrangements within the association itself. I've, I've seen in the treaty itself that there are close to about 20 countries that have acceded to this treaty, and um, most of them are part of 
East Asia, China is there, Singapore is there, I mean, United States, et cetera, et cetera, are there. But as the department explained, it took the U.S. 15 years to be accepted. What are the implications for us? Does it mean that we are going to have to increase individual trade with the various member states of the founding uh, treaty partners? Or does it mean that immediately we, are, we begin to access those advantages? Secondly, this assessment that is going to be done on us, is it going to be done on the basis of what we already trading and exchanging on with those countries? Or is it going to be, I, I mean, will the association also take into consideration our overall trade with other countries in, in Asia, not necessarily Southern Asia? Third, thirdly, Chairperson, um, I want to understand what is the, the inter, inter and inter trade between and among these individual countries. And what, what competition are we going to face if. I go. Can you please mute your mic, please? What, okay. what, is, what is a trade between and among these member states that are already there? And are our goods and services going to meet with intensive competition uh, to find space and, and, and market in, those, uh, uh, in, in the association mm -hmm. itself? Are we ready? Are our industries are our industries are our industries uh, as, as outlined by the DG already liberated uh, to to compete in those markets because that is what is, is going to be crucial. If we can't send goods that are able to compete with goods that come from China, for example from the United States in that region, it is going to be difficult. Uh, and, and what is the manufacturing base that we have in the country in order to, to compete at those, at those levels? And Article, Article 7 of the treaty, if you read it, it says that the association will develop a regional strategy for economic development. My question is, has the department have access to this regional economic development strategy and what it is what is it what does it say about the intertrade within the the region itself article 6 of the treaty also provides towards the end for the association to engage in regional cooperation i mean in cooperation with regional bodies uh, and what is the advantage of us going as a country compared to going as a region, meaning as a continent or as SADC? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Koshi. Honorable Swart. Thank you. Yes, Chair, I'm here. I don't see your face. No way. Yes. Do you see me now, Chair? Yes, we can see you now. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, mm. I would like to welcome the input by the DG and the presentation from the department. Chair, um, the approval of the treaty. First of all, is it in move um, in line um, with South Africa, with the South Side Cooperation? Chairperson, the answer is yes. South Africa, like many nations around the globe, must engage with the international system in a way that encourages economic growth and development. The white paper on South Africa's foreign policy does support the establishment of political and economic relations with countries of Asia. 
In our view, the department has aligned the prescripts of the white paper, the NDP department strategic of 2020 to 2025, the annual performance plan of 2020 and 2021. We support the view that the advancement of South South cooperation is of strategic importance in the pursuit of the country's foreign policy objectives. This enables the country to address the challenges of economic and political marginalization that emanates from the process of globalization that is based towards the countries of the North. Chairperson, indeed, the South South agenda currently around the promotion of global reforms, multilateral solidarity, market access, trade, and investments. The key tenants on South-South cooperation as provided in the white paper on South African policy highlight that power shifts in the global and political economic system have increased the relevance of the Asian region. With major emerging powers such as China and India increasing their global influence, Asia has become South Africa's largest trading region and an increasingly important source of investment, particularly China, India, and Japan. As a result, Chairperson, South Africa should focus on identifying <laughs> underexplored markets in the region that will provide new export opportunities as it is doing now. We are in full agreement with the white paper that South Africa should not lose sight of the fact that there are also many middle powers in Asia such as Indonesia, Malaysia, Republic of Korea, and Vietnam, that are both partners and competitors. Chairperson, it is within our oversight mandate that we should ensure that South Africa leverages the fact that these countries share similar views on reform of global governance, solidarity, and economic justice. Chair, before I end, after this input, I do have questions for the department chair. That the, con the constitution, yes, requires you to request rectification from parliament. However, I would like to know how do you do monitoring? How do you report on activities? At what point do you report after the outcome of the rectifications? We rectify then what check? Do we just sign? Does the department have an example on what South Africa has gained on previous rectifications? What is the impact? And is there any results? Or is it only the number of TV signs that the department can put before us? I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Let us welcome the presentation from the department. I have a few questions. Uh, Chairperson, I would also like to recommend that uh, as a committee, at some point we get taken through agreements that uh, South Africa is currently part of so that we can also get to see if there are any forms of duplications and how do we then be able to streamline uh, our agreements with with regions and what type of um, regional integrations is south africa striving towards uh, my question chairperson is number one uh, how what role would south africa play in this uh, regional body with regards to the South China Sea conflict, because China being the biggest body in that uh, agreement, they normally use their powers to coerce and uh, force these Asian countries in this region to recognize their position in the fight of um, the South China Sea conflict, which ends up then affecting the effectiveness of this region. And 
as other members have said, that it may take about 20 years for us to be a strategic partner. Um, what then does this um, agreement lead to? How will it assist with the program of uh, Africa United? How will other countries uh, be able to benefit as the African continent? I heard the presenter spoke of the fact that uh, us as South Africa, we, we carry the continent on our shoulders. What I would also like to know, uh, currently Africa is the biggest supplier of commodity. Uh, belonging to this region, how will we make sure that we move basically from supply being a supplier of raw materials to developing industries in South Africa that can play a bigger role in this uh, agreement. Also, South Africa belongs to a body, and some of the members that are on this uh, region, Asian, they belong to IORA. Uh, how will these bodies be integrated and... Um, Will there be ever, will there ever be consultations between IORA and, and this agent? Because at the end of the day, we have to protect our oceans from the piracy, which is the biggest form of uh, instability happening in this region. And then my other question, Chair, goes to the Asian Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights. According to South Africa's assessment, how effective has this body been? And what role will South Africa play uh, in regards to this uh, Commission of Human Rights in the Asian uh, Department? And then, Chairperson, I think to go back to my first point, uh, it will be very important to, to check the agreements that South Africa is affiliating in so that we can be able to streamline which which ones will assist in our goal as in the abuja treaty of being a united africa thank you uh, chapters um honorable members um that concludes your questions and the uh, comments and questions over to the BG um, for the responses. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I'll first defer to Cindy so to do it and then I'll, I'll sweep. Cindy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, TG. And thank you for the questions. Uh, let me start with the first question around the membership of, of China or the focus. Um, China is not the member of ASEAN. ASEAN is made up of the 10 countries uh, as, as reflected in the in the DG's presentation, I'm trying to go back to that presentation uh, to show where uh, uh, China is with regards to the with regards to the to the to the to the ASEAN. So to answer that, uh, 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 China is not part of ASEAN. So the focus now is in the area that is green, the green area, that is the only focus for now. So China is above, is neighboring uh, Myanmar and others, so is India. So the, uh, it is not a change in, in South Africa's uh, foreign policy or uh, to China, but it is just an, a, a, a diversification of our foreign policy uh, initiatives. Uh, so to, to answer the question directly, we are not moving away from our relations with China. China is not part of this region that we are talking to. to. Maybe you are making reference to the, to the TAC itself, 
because China is also a dialogue partner in ASEAN. And uh, the other question on uh, the issue of non-intervention. Uh, sorry, okay, to, thank you. I had to move a little bit, sorry for that. Um, the, 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 the principle of non-intervention is informed by the history of the establishment of ASEAN as a board in 1967. This, this history talks to the conflicts that existed in the region. And amongst the members, the founding members, the, the five founding members of ASEAN. And therefore, to bring this group together, to bring these countries together, there had to be concessions that were made. And part of that, I think we do the same with our African Union, the principle of non-intervention in the domestic affairs of one another, which I think is the principle that is a, a, a thread running through all the, multi, all, uh, the regional uh, uh, organizations that are established, the principle of non-intervention. And also, the, the, the issue of human rights uh, violation, because that question was linked to the, to, the, to the human rights violation by a number of countries. I will cite an example of Myanmar being the member of ASEAN and the human rights record of Myanmar and other countries. If you talk about Indonesia and, and, and the, 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 the Papua community and all of, 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 of those. But what we are focusing on for South Africa is engaging bilaterally on issues that are domestic, which is the position that we take in the execution of our foreign policy, rather than taking these on a multilateral platform. Yes, where we see there is a need for us to vote against or in favor of in the platforms like the UN, we do that. But in this platform, we are, we are guided by those principles that we are acceding to, because we, do not, uh, uh, we do also do not want uh, countries who interfere in our domestic affairs you take the issue of the of the of the of the land uh, um, and and redistribution thereof when other countries made comments about what we are doing domestically then we had to stand and say we do this for for this reason however the human rights violation take a different turn because our foreign policy is uh, it hinges on the on the on the on human rights and therefore we engage those countries that we perceive to be violating the human rights for example myanmar which is a standing example in the region. And we are engaging, we are supporting where they need support, and we constantly engage bilaterally. We do not let them go because we are in partnership with them. We have bilateral relations with quite a number of countries that are violating human rights, but we engage bilaterally and we make our position clear and we inform them of the position that South Africa is opposed to a violation of human rights. And therefore, we are we we take responsibility of that, and we engage bilaterally, but guided by the principles of this organisation that we want to accede to. And the the, the meaning of technical cooperation, I, I, I would loosely uh, put it as any activity that uh, assists uh, the the. the to improve or rather to augment the level of skills, of knowledge, of technical expertise. So when we are saying we are going to, we are we, we also going to cooperate technically, is, the, is, is, is us saying we are going to gain from, uh, from the developed level, for example, of Singapore. If, for example, we want to emphasize our uh, development of our ICT sector, then we know that there are countries in the region that are ahead 
of, of, of everybody else. And therefore, we, be, we benefit from that by building our own technical expertise. And also in the area which was touched also, the area of manufacturing. Um, and also we learn that uh, uh, these countries uh, sell to us a lot of manufactured goods. And therefore, that technical knowledge on how do they process theirs that can be learned also from, from, from the region to South Africa as part of this collaboration. That will also improve our skills. Uh, 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 that is what we mean by the technical cooperation. And um, the extradition uh, uh, clause if it is included no it is not included in this particular uh, in the gac however we work together with the department of justice uh, the process flow of this was when we received the instrument of accession the tac itself we gave it to the department of justice that it is in sync with our domestic law. We also gave it to the international uh, 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 law state uh, ad advisors in the department, and that was agreed that it is it does not clash with any other body that we are we are we are members to, and therefore the, it is aligned to everything else that we are doing through the execution of our foreign policy. Where we need extradition treaties, we do that separately but it is not covered within the TAC as it stands. Um, the status of the treaty, uh, if it is uh, endorsed by parliament, by, by cabinet, but, uh, but uh, uh, um, a cabinet, uh, but parliament does not approve. What we were stating is the steps that we have taken to, to, to inform uh, uh, the members that uh, within the executive structure, this has gone through, this have, is known by the executive and also the other departments. We started with our cluster, the ICTS cluster, and it was endorsed. We went to the ministerial cluster, it was endorsed. We went to the, to the cabinet and then so that when, because at the end of the day, it is the executive that will account to parliament on the treaty so we could not bring it to the cabinet to the to parliament without cabinet knowing about that it was just an outline of of the process but for treaties we cannot accede or sign any treaty because the constitution states that that must be done by parliament it has to be approved so i would say in a summary if cabinet supports this and cap and parliament does not uh, uh, support we cannot accede because uh, the constitution states that we must have parliamentary uh, approval before we can do that um, for now i've taken note of the later possible financial implications uh, for now we there are no security, no financial implications, no that are foreseen in the future that will, 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 uh, will, will come as a result of acceding to the Treaty of Amity. Um, uh, the critical skills that our economy uh, uh, needs are in, uh, outlined in various documents of government. I've, 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 I've spoken about uh, the capability, the manufacturing capability for our SMMEs, for example. How do we put <laughs> that into the <laughs> okay. May I continue? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, all right, thank you. Um, so how do we put our SMEs in the value chain and, 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 and produce uh, in bigger numbers? What is it that ASEAN is doing better than us? It's through uh, those uh, 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 sharing of lessons and also learning from them because they are ahead of, of, of us. We're looking at, uh, um, I've, I've made mention of a uh, I've cited the example of Singapore, who is ahead of the of the of 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 all of us in 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 the continent when it comes to ICT. What is it that we can learn from them? So it's such skills that will augment our own capability to produce as a country. And um, what are the 
the, the, the steps in terms of that you graduate from this to be to be something else. Really, I think it is what it is what a, a country does and how meaningful does the country engage with ASEAN. Uh, I, I will contextualize uh, also the, the 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 delay maybe in the in the United States, which have made an example of a, 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 a delay in them to be a strategic partner. The other reason why ASEAN was established, it was a, a purpose of warding off the effects of the Cold War. So, so as to avoid the region being a playing ground or a, a, a for, 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 for the, for the, during the Cold War era. Therefore, the relations with US as part of the, of the, of the players in, in the Cold War could, could be delayed by that because they did not want maybe the way the US was positioning itself as part of the Cold War, it made the delay longer into them being considered to be a strategic partner. But post Cold War uh, relations, even the relations of ASEAN external relations changed. So it is it is not a uh, uh, to say that South Africa will only get to the level of being a strategic partner because already at bilateral level, we have strategic partnerships with, with Indonesia, which is the biggest uh, 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 country in terms of, of population in ASEAN. So it does not mean that to, 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 be, to, to, to get to the level of being a strategic partner, you take the whole uh, the, the, the 15 years and maybe no, it is by no means that, but it is what the engagement is about. It is what we, 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 we founded on and I've made reference to, to, the, to the founding of the to the, to the reference to the principles of the of the of the of the Bandung conference, which also says that we also already have existing amity between uh, South Africa and the countries in ASEAN. And also to point out that the level of being a strategic partner does not mean that we do not engage with the region and benefit immediately when we accede to the treaty. But what it does for us is that we are engaging with these countries as a block. So when they agree on a certain issue, we have raised the issue of market access. And uh, so when we engage with the block and we make some trade-offs, because when we, as, when we design the, the dialogue partnership document, we state what is it that we want to get, and they also do the same, that we tend to get this uh, if we, if we, if we, if we uh, 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 partner with South Africa on this. The point that was made to say that, why don't we go as a region? Instead, we go as South Africa. We are at, uh, at different levels of interest in different regions as countries. So it is in the national interest of South Africa to take this opportunity of working closely with this growing region. However, the ASEAN Secretariat will approach, for example, SADC Secretariat so that there is a collaboration at region to region uh, 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 level. But as South Africa, we have control over what we do and how we engage with ASEAN. But the benefits as we, as, as we go further will increase as we engage uh, with, with, the, with the region. And um, uh, I've, I've taken note. I think DG will 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 uh, will, uh, will attend to that issue of uh, which I think is not a question that the portfolio committee needs to be taken through all the other agreements for to ensure that there is streamlining of our engagements. The role that South Africa is playing in the in the in, in the South China Sea conflict again takes the same approach of engaging at bilateral level. And we 
we we we understand that this issue of conflict is attended to through the ASEAN uh, 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 to the ASEAN's regional forum. That forum is mainly to attend to issues of security. So China is part of that ARF, that is the, the, the ASEAN Regional Forum, whose focus is to uh, engage on issues of, uh, of, of security that affect all the countries in Asia Pacific. And so those matters are discussed at that level, but with the accession to the TAC, we are, we are only acceding to those things that are outlined in the, in the, in the treaty itself. I think I've aligned the, the, the benefit to the rest of the continent uh, when I made mention of the fact that when we, when for example, you have a, a, a foreign uh, investor directly investing in South Africa, that investor has access to, uh, to SADC because of the FTA that we have, has access to the to to the three regions that are part of the uh, of the TFTA, the tri the tripartite free trade area that is Commerce Asatec and the EAC. So we 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 have that engagement to say what we are, which is part of our foreign policy to the rest of the continent, that we share the benefits that South Africa accrues from its own foreign relations. Uh, I will leave the, 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 the question to my colleague, Dave, who is also responsible for IORA, who will uh, then respond uh, uh, meaningfully on how do we integrate this work, this, inter this uh, accession to the Treaty of uh, Amity and Cooperation of ASEAN, who and who have members of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ASEAN as members of IORA. I'll kindly request that we I hand over to Dave Michelson, who's my uh, a colleague. Uh, he is also online, if uh, the chairperson allows us. You are not, you have no power to do that on the day. You throw back the ball to the department for the outstanding policy. I'm in charge. Thank you. I'll hand over to the teacher. Please. Thank you, Honorable Chair. May, may I allow uh, Dave Malcolmson to just take this one on Ayora? Am I allowed? Okay. Continue. Dave. Dave. Thank you very much, DG. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and my colleague from the department, as well as the honorable members. <clears throat> In terms of that question about Ayora and also linked to uh, the cooperation between regional bodies such as the African Union and SADC. Uh, my colleague had dealt with some of it, but just to say that, as she mentioned earlier, <clears throat> the engagement uh, by South Africa on behalf of the continent does go back much further to that time when President Mbeki did address the 8th ASEAN Summit in November 2002 in Phnom Penh in Cambodia on behalf of the African Union as chair. <clears throat> and resulting from that engagement, we then developed, along with Indonesia, South Africa and Indonesia were co-chairs, and we developed the new Asia-Africa Strategic Partnership as one outcome. The second outcome was the NEPAD Secretariat, as at the time, what is now the NEPAD Development Agency, established a relationship with the ASEAN Secretariat, and uh, that relationship, as far as I'm aware, is still ongoing. Uh, in terms of the outcomes as well of that initial interaction by President Mbeki with ASEAN, it led to, uh, as I said, the NAST taking forward the South-South solidarity issues with Asia, which, with Asia and West Asia, what, what is known as Middle East, on the 1955 Bandung principles. A long-term consequence of that was in the FOCAC arrangement, the Forum for China-Africa Cooperation, for many years, we struggled to get the Chinese to agree to inter-regional multi-country projects. And it was only once China had done some multi-country uh, cross-border projects in ASEAN that they then were able, when we were chairing uh, FOCAC in 2015, 
to agree to the regional integration projects as put forward by the African Union. So that's another example of the type of interaction you can have uh, with countries in ASEAN and that are associated with ASEAN that lead to support for African development. <clears throat> Just on SADC, quick, as far as I know, also the SADC Secretariat has a relationship with the ASEAN Secretariat. And for some years now, they've even been talking about a SADC uh, ASEAN FTA, although we haven't had much traction on that over the years. But there is cooperation. In terms of IORA, while we were chairing, we got the uh, CSO and the Council of Ministers of IORA to agree to allow the IORA Secretariat to develop a cooperative relationship with the ASEAN Secretariat. And that has been taken forward by the current uh, Secretary General, Dr. Nokwe. Uh, for example, already they're talking about a specific area of collaboration, which is on marine plastic uh, pollution, uh, which is something that's critical to both uh, IORA and ASEAN. And of course, in the blue economy, which is part of our Operation Pakisa and a key part of the IORA uh, mandate, uh, we will be taking that forward with the ASEAN members. Our Department of Tourism as well has leveraged that to begin engaging with the ASEAN Secretariat to learn models of best practice of how ASEAN markets their region as a tourist destination, but also uh, looking at areas of bilateral uh, tourism cooperation with countries in ASEAN. So I think, Chair, that uh, takes care of the, some of the questions around the leveraging of being able to collaborate with ASEAN to the benefit of the AU, SADC, and IORA. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, colleagues have really done a great job and left me with little to say, but I want to comment on the or answer to one of the questions raised by um, uh, Honorable Msani regarding the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, in which she, pro uh, she really uh, indicated the point that is, uh, many observers have always alluded to, where it was felt that the, 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 this commission uh, it, it was not effective enough. Indeed, it is so, but we want to join with uh, ASEAN on the basis of our interest a national interest for that matter, as a, a country with human rights based foreign policy, of course it is our, our view and our very, very uh, serious view that human rights should be underpinning every effort. Thankful to the fact that the ASEAN uh, uh, countries indeed found the need to have it, although we cannot guarantee the success that it should have made. It is a point to note, and it is a matter that it uh, to all to, to 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 understand and see. The other matter is that Honorable Swartz spoke to the matter of how do we monitor and report. I must uh, really thank the committee. Maybe I'm not long in this portfolio, in this position, but just to be part of the history where it could possibly have been a matter of us just doing tick in the box, submit a request to the Honorable Speaker, submit the, uh, the, this request for accession, and then it's taken somewhere, it is ratified, and then we put it in the cupboard and we go home to everything. The fact that the committee found it appropriate and necessary, that the committee has to satisfy itself about the rationale as well as the, uh, why we did we needed to do it uh, puts into us that we will be held accountable for what what we presented what we requested and for me it is like we are in the right direction because it could have been one of those things and as we are starting with our new MTSF and the uh, the strategic planning process where we are no longer reporting indeed about numbers, but rather we should be reporting about impact. This is one of the areas that wouldn't be surprised one day once it has been acceded to and we are in the stages and the committee requests to know what is going on. We will be accounting 
on this because the purpose, of course, is, as honorable members noted, to benefit from the economies of scale. That's why we have a lot of many mechanisms like bilateral ones, plurilateral like this one, and multilateral, which means our soft power, which is the most important element of diplomacy, is working because we have more friends and on a very binding nature, it means our country is moving in the right direction because of the many associations and many other ways that we are part of and for which we have to thank uh, our leadership in the country and the committee's uh, perspective in seeing, in digging deep and to understand why we're doing what we are doing. Most definitely not to just inquire, but to make it a point to us that we need to to, to put everything, uh, our theories into practice. I must emphasize again that, indeed, in matters like this, we collaborate very well with the uh, uh, chief state law advisor in justice, and they are the ones who scrutinize to see whether we are in line and in accordance with our constitution, so that it is not us about ourselves for ourselves, but we get a third eye to see what we are doing. Indeed, the, 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 there is an important point that we have to emphasize that once this has been uh, in, 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 in access, I mean, uh, accession to, we will be able to account, as I said. But the most important is then to take interest in the fact that we have uh, shown the, the countries, and one of the honorable members asked, why mention these countries? the five countries. When, we, when I started with the uh, pictorial or graphical one, I showed the sizes of D D GDPs. And we look at the countries I mentioned and look at their GDPs because that signifies the weight of the economy. And that, and when you are in business or in, on trade, you look at the, 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 the size of a GDP and, 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 and per capita as well is an indication to you that your market is a market that will bring value to your good self. So this is precisely why we have just mentioned, not that they are the only ones, but we pinpointed the fact that those countries based on their GDPs and the fact that it can benefit our economy, which is uh, summarized in the seven priorities, which constitute what currently we can say it's our national interest because a foreign policy should be seen as an extension of a domestic uh, priority. So the value chain there is to be completed by the fact that we just don't do international relations for the good of it, but we do it in order to service the interest and the priorities of our country. And one such mechanism is this a kind of a situation where we join the 10 countries together with the other associate members to ensure that we have economies of scale, as I said. We are very much a member of BRICS, very active, and this is a complementary uh, 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 relations to whatever we have beat BRICS, beat FOCAC, beat, beat IPSA, any and every other, which all of them can be summarized as South Africa's foreign policy being robust, as well as uh, reaping the benefits of good relations as espoused in our constitution. I think I have covered, I don't want to repeat what my colleagues have, who have so well done uh, have said by now. I thank you, honorable members, honorable chair, and my honorable uh, uh, bosses, the, the deputy ministers. Well, honorable members, um, uh, GM, are you are you there? Yes, GM, yes. Input yes, from you. Well, um, input from you, sir. Well, thank you very much.
Okay. Yes, I'm continuing. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And my apology to join late as usual. I had some glitches and all that. But uh, I don't have much, but just to say that, in fact, um, it is very important for Parliament and for the Portfolio Committee to support uh, our uh, acceding to, to the treaty as it is required by the Constitution. And it's up to the committee how to present it in Parliament. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Deputy Minister um, Alvin Pomotu. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, uh, and uh, greetings to uh, uh, PC members. Uh, Chair, I think uh, quite uh, evidently uh, the request for the granting of approval uh, by Parliament uh, is in line, of course, Chair, uh, with the White Paper, uh, which uh, held that uh, the Asian continent is of increased importance to South Africa and in particular to Africa. Uh, and I think, Chair, the Portfolio Committee appreciate the fact that um, the current dispensation of our Asian trade relations uh, uh, evidently relates to uh, having a particular uh, overture to China, uh, India, and Japan. Uh, and this treaty, uh, Chair, uh, gives us a, a multiplier of a possibility uh, to, to ensure that our footprint uh, is embedded within South, uh, Southeast, uh, Southeast of Asia. But I think importantly, one of the key issues in terms of our economic uh, diplomacy instrument, Chair, this treaty should result in an increase uh, from uh, the average four billion US dollar trade uh, amongst uh, the Asian community to, to, to far exceed that. And that should be one of the key me methods how the PC should actually keep us accountable for, for, for advancing this uh, persuasive uh, argument. Lastly, Chair, I, I think the, if, if members of PC can recall, uh, this work has been started uh, in as far back as to, in 2008 uh, through collaboration uh, by Turco and the seven Asian uh, 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 missions uh, based in Pretoria uh, that have actually ultimately persuaded the Asian community to, to allow South Africa to be a privileged uh, member uh, within the uh, uh, body uh, politic. The issues of the Abuja Treaty Chair, Chairperson, uh, as it relates to the Continental Customs Unions, uh, the, the, the Continental Common Market, uh, vice versa, the African Free Trade uh, Continental Agreement, I think, I think it's an important debate. Uh, uh, th that has been raised, and, and I think politically we'll have to define uh, the relationship uh, between all these uh, regional uh, uh, blocks at a multilateral level and a key economic instrument such as your free trade uh, continental agreement. Having said that, uh, uh, Slalo, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, us for having the privilege of, uh, of the peace in uh, Namtlanje. <laughs> Um, thank you um, very much, um, uh, Honourable um, House Reporters, uh, Deputy Minister uh, Mashiko uh, Lamini. Um, this is, um, I'm sure you, you, you are a fortune teller um, because you, you responded to what I wanted to ask um, earlier on. Um, whether whether um, the the treaty has passed the test of time. No, there's one favorite office of mine there at Jericho, the one of advocacy. Advocacy. I was going to ask if the treaty has passed um, the test of time in that office. Uh, but in your response, I think you you have um, covered that. Um, 
honorable members, um, as we are seated here, um, we are receiving the news, uh, Honorable Muela, not only Honorable D.D. Damini that has passed on today, um, the, the outgoing president um, of, of, of Burundi, um, the mother of the uh, uh, late Kurunzinza, uh, also has passed on. Uh, those are the, uh, the news that we are getting. Um, um, on 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 the on the media, um, uh, um, also um, some of the family members um, are, are in hospital. Uh, breaking news of one minister of South Sudan uh, who has. Uh, Passed on uh, because of the uh, uh, of coronavirus, and um, it is alleged because it's the media that is saying this. We have not verified it. Probably Jericho can verify it for us. Uh, that half of the cabinet uh, in South Sudan is suffering from COVID-19. Then that's a clear indication that. Um, uh, this corona is is is, is real, um, and it, it's a it's a real struggle, and and and, and by all means necessary, um, as a country we must take it serious and never get tired of teaching. Uh, the people, uh, we send our condolences uh, to the families um, of, of of those. Uh, Colleagues and and and, and friends um, in the continent and, and abroad that have passed on, and more patients are our own um, umama uzizi honourable duty is the meaning. So, uh, honourable members. Uh, um, the Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation um, has been considered uh, the request uh, for approval by Parliament uh, of the Republic of South Africa. Uh, South Africa's accession to Treaty of Cooperation uh, in Southeast Asia referred to it as referred to it recommends. Uh, we will recommend that the House, in terms of Section 23, uh, so I want then before we ask uh, for the committee to even consider, um, the Parliament to consider, I want to verify uh, with the portfolio committee. Uh, if we update this treaty, uh, and and as we have satisfied ourselves, um, uh, honourable uh, members, so that we are able uh, now at the level of the uh, parliament to uh, also ensure that uh, this thing is able and. Um, we will seek approval or concurrence by the National Assembly and then to get that particular approval. So, um, can we then move forward? Huh? Yeah, we are wrapping up, Lavi. Chairperson? Don't want any mistakes to have this one. Chairperson? I move that the committee 
accept the report and then recommends uh, to Parliament uh, for approval of this ascension. Thank you. Jefferson, I second. Who is talking now? Honorable Mishra is talking. Thank you, Rev. Um, uh, so, um, the Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation um, considers the request for approval by Parliament of South Africans accession to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia reflects uh, it recommends that the House in terms of section 231 subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of the Country 1996 approved the said treaty. So having adopted the treaty it is Therefore, agreed to. So that is um, 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 to the speaker. Are we clear? Yes, Chair. Remove the Yes, Chair. So, um, honorable members, um, the time now. Uh, 1948, uh, meaning we are two minutes to 28. Then today we'll say an hour and a couple of minutes uh, because our meeting was supposed to um, conclude uh, at nine o'clock. So we are going to use that hour. And um, when we have a um, serious discussion, which needs more time in the portfolio committee with those huge presentations by the department, and we are going to have uh, that hour for, for such um, uh, instances um, without um, wasting your time. We have a fruitful meeting today, and uh, thank you very much to both the Deputy Minister Alvin Barton and the uh, um, Deputy Minister Mashukota uh, for always gracing our portfolio committee meetings with their, with their presence. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to COVID-19 that we have you all the time when we have meetings. Um, during this lockdown, otherwise we would have been in another country executing uh, the way of the country, uh, probably uh, in, 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 in the western side of the, the globe. Um, but because of Corona and the COVID-19, uh, you are always uh, here uh, with us. Um, we noticed uh, the constant improvement uh, we see uh, in the department, Honorable Mulder will agree with me that uh, the issue of two books uh, in one crawl um, is, 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 is vanishing um, uh, bit by bit. Honorable Bachman must be happy where he is uh, that. Um, the two bulls story in one call, um, slowly but surely we see it eradicating 
um, um, vanishing and thanks to the collective leadership of this portfolio committee uh, for that, or uh, probably if the uh, uh, coronavirus lockdown uh, also has uh, taught people to work together and work as a collective um, at, at all costs, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what circumstances or how one feels. Uh, uh, that they are forced to work together. Uh, honorable members, uh, 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 we are deeply uh, yesterday uh, in the in the honorable house of Mandela. Um, all our uh, things we we tabled today uh, we are grateful. Uh, we only got one rejection from the ACTC. I did not hear EFM saying anything. Uh, so we have processed uh, everything on our side is processed. You now the ball is in your court. You have your foreign policy here um, uh, in your dinner table. Uh, so you, 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 we want to see you as movers and takers. Uh, next time, we are going to request you to come and report on tangible um, 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 things and, and what we have processed guided by that foreign policy bill, um, because you, you, you must keep the ball rolling. Uh, there's a lot of things which were um, kept um, and, 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 and your hands were tied uh, because there was a um, legislation for you uh, to move and, and do some of the things uh, for, for the country and your responsibilities were tied um, such that you were unable to implement some of the things. Now with that deal, with that bill signed by the president and then approved by parliament, you want to see wonders. No story, 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 blah, 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 shall end. It shall not uh, continue anymore. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, with that said, our meeting is adjourned. Uh, honorable Chetty, you are so quiet these days, and you know what? That, that quietness of yours is, is, is becoming very loud. Thank you very much, honorable members. Um, uh, see you next week. Um, in our in our next meeting, um, yeah. So we are looking forward to start back here. Bye. Bye, honourable members. You can now go and sleep. Bye. 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 Thank you and good uh, evening, uh, ministers and Bye bye, we. Bye bye, uh, bye bye, yeah. Swart. Bye bye, we. Bye bye, and Sunny. <laughs> Bye bye, DM. Bye bye, DM. Bye bye, DM.